But first up, Amnesty International twice named him Journalist of the Year, once more than me. <laughs> and his new book is Chasing the Scream, the first and last days of the war on drugs. Johan Hari, hey. <laughs> How are you, sir? Great to meet you. Cheers, Bill, thank you. Thank you for coming across the pond. Thank and you very uh, much. you've written a terrific book on drugs, so obviously my first question is, are you holding? <laughs> Tragically not. <laughs> okay. No, you're not you're completely sober now because you I'm, went you went through your problems with drugs. Right? I'm like Mitt Romney. <laughs> you're, you're... In, in one limited sense. Yeah. Meaning? Meaning I'm like a Mormon, I don't use anything. <laughs> oh, oh I see. Not, Sorry, that was not even caffeine or I caffeine a little bit, but today I'm trying. Well, then you're not a Mormon. That's true. Yeah, so I got you there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what's I, what I find most interesting about your book is that you say everything we think we know about addiction has been wrong. Is that right? Yeah, it really struck me, you know, when I started working on this book four years ago, I had a very personal reason to do it. We had a lot of addiction in my family. One of my first memories is of trying to wake up one of my relatives and not being able to. And if you had said to me, what causes heroin addiction? I would have looked at you like you were a little bit stupid and I would have said, well, heroin causes heroin addiction, right? We think that we've been told this story for 100 years that's so obvious to us, it's like our sense of, it's like our common sense, you know? We think if the first 20 people in this audience all used heroin together with us, on day 21, we'd all be heroin addicts because there are chemical hooks in the heroin that our body would physically need. That's what we think heroin is. That's what I thought. Exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and That's why I never did heroin. Exactly. <laughs> The so first... you're saying I could do heroin? Well, the, f <laughs> the first... Thank you for coming by. It's just great to meet you. <laughs> now let's meet our panel. <laughs> the, first thing, the first thing that alerted me to the fact that I may not be right is, if any of us, if we step out of here today and we get hit by a car, God forbid, and we break our hip, we'll be taken to hospital and we'll be given a lot of diamorphine. Diamorphine is heroin, right? Mm. Diamorphine is much better heroin than you're going to score out on the street because it's really? medically pure, right? right? As opposed to stuff on the street which is contaminated and very weak. Right. You'll take it for quite a long time, right? Happening in every hospital in the United States, every hospital in the developed world, lots of people are taking heroin for long periods of time. Now, if our old theory about addiction is right, we know what should happen. Those people should go out and score on the streets, right? You will have noticed that your grandmother was not turned into a junkie by her hip operation. And so I was thinking, like, how can this be? What's going on there? And then I, I didn't really understand it. I went and interviewed a man called Professor Bruce Alexander in Vancouver, who did an incredible experiment that helps us to really understand this. Basically, the old theory of addiction comes from an experiment that was done earlier in the 20th century. Really simple experiment. Anyone watching this can do it at home if they're feeling a little bit sadistic. You get a rat and you put it in a cage. Get a rat? Get a rat, just buy one, take it from that? the sewer. Well, who, who sells rats? There are dealers for these things. And um, you get a rat, put it in a cage, and it has two water bottles. One is just water, and one is water laced with either heroin or cocaine. If you do that, the rat will almost always prefer the drugged water and almost always kill itself. You might remember there was an advert, Partnership for Drug Free America advert in the sure. 80s about this that said, you know, it will happen to you, or some, something like right. that. Bruce came along in the 70s and said, well, hang on a minute. We're putting the rat in an empty cage it's got nothing to do except take the drugs. Let's do this differently. So Bruce built Rat Park. Rat Park is like heaven for rats, right? <laughs> Everything you're rat about town could... It's where I buy all my rats. <laughs> it's got... I go to Rat Park. <laughs> it's got cheese. Rat it's Co. Got... is good, too. <laughs> It's got, in this cage, it's got like coloured balls, it's got loads of friends, it can have loads of sex. Anything a rat could want, it's got in Rat Park. And it's got both the water bottles. It's got water, just normal water and drugged water. But here's the fascinating thing. In Rat Park, they don't like the drugged water. Right. They almost never use it. They never open it. Because it has friends, sex, and colored balls. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so. What Bruce says about that yeah. is it tells us that both the right wing theory of addiction and the left wing theory of addiction are wrong. The right wing theory is it's a moral failing, you party too hard. Right. The left wing theory is it hijacks your brain and so on. What Bruce says is it's not your morality, it's not your brain, it's your cage. It's an adaptation to your wow. environment. And there's some really interesting human examples of that as well. You, same thing, we put them in a cage. <laughs> That'd be a good idea, but something very similar. At the same time as Rat Park, there was an experiment going on. It was called the Vietnam War. 20% of American troops in Vietnam were using heroin a lot, right? Right. And if you look at the news stories from the time, they're really worried because they thought, my God, we're going to have loads of junkies on the streets right. of the United States when the war is over. So what happened? They came home and they just stopped.
Because if you go so from... So what are the implications of this for society if, if you're, you're saying that heroin is not what we thought it was and people can do it recreationally? There are huge implications, firstly, for the drug war, right? The drug war is based on the idea that the chemicals cause the addiction, therefore we need to physically eradicate the chemicals right. from the face of the earth. If actually the vast majority of people who use these chemicals don't become addicted, if in fact you've got to have a whole other thing going on, it makes sense to wage war on that thing. What we do is we actually make the real cause of addiction worse. We take addicts who are addicts because they're isolated and cut off, and we cut them off and isolate them more. I went out on a chain gang in Arizona with women who were forced to go out on T-shirts saying, I was a drug addict and dig graves. Mm -hmm. They're never going to work again, those women. That is going to guarantee that their addiction is deeper. Gabor Mate, a doctor in Vancouver, said to me, if you wanted to design a system that would keep people addicted, you would design what we have now. And the opposite is Portugal, right? I mean, the, I've been reading about Portugal for over a decade, what they did. It's mind-blowing. The opposite... Well, the approach and with great results, right? In the year 2000, Portugal had the worst drug problem in Europe. 1% of the population was addicted to heroin. It was mind-blowing. And every year they tried the American way and every year the problem got worse and worse. So they got together and then they got a panel of scientists and doctors and said, look, tell us what will genuinely solve this. And the panel came back and said, decriminalise everything, from cannabis to crack, everything. But, and this is the crucial next step, take all the money we used to spend on arresting drug users, imprisoning drug users, all of that, Take that and spend it on really good drug treatment. And it's not drug treatment like we think of it in the US. Some of it is like rehab. Mostly it's about reconnecting addicts with society. Things like subsidised jobs. Say you used to be an addict. When you're ready, they'll go to a garage and they'll say, if you employ this guy as a mechanic for a year, we'll pay half his wages. The goal was to make sure that every addict in Portugal wakes up with something yeah, to do in the world. This morning. is going to be a bit of a tough sell for <laughs> Republican Congress. <laughs> but to, the... sub, to give money to drug addicts? I agree, but we've got yeah, to look at I, the results in Portugal, right? It helps us to understand... I, I, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. I'm just yeah. saying it's not going to happen here. The you know, the, the results... We're the gun country, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the results we are put in... you in jail, we fuck with you, we give you a gun, but that, that's, not, that's not going to happen. Know, this was but a it should. That, I agree yeah. with you, it should. Well, not least because of what actually happened in Portugal. Injecting drug use is down right. by 50%. No one's going to... And it's really interesting. I interviewed the guy who led the opposition to the decriminalisation. The top drug cop is named Juan Figuera, right? He's saying, he said all the Fox News things, and there was a lot of resistance to this in Portugal, like there would be in the US, right? He said all the things that a lot of your viewers are going to be thinking perfectly reasonably. And when I interviewed him, he said, everything I said would happen, everything I said would happen didn't happen. Right. And everything the other side said would happen did. And he talked about how he was ashamed that he'd spent 20 years arresting drug users. And he hoped the whole world followed our example. And I really think, you know, the one thing you can say for the drug war is we gave it a fair shot, right? Yeah, oh, more than a fair shot. And very enlightening. Thank you for telling us all this. Heroin after the show, everybody, huh? <laughs> Not quite. All right, Johan, thank you so much. Great job.